Father, we give you the praise and the honor in Jesus' precious name. I'd like to welcome you this evening. I'm so excited. Excited in God. Excited in the reality of the word. That word will impact you tonight. Open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 10 and in verse 26. Fear them not therefore. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. There is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' precious name. I speak on the subject, the mystery behind the misery. The mystery behind the misery. Our objective is to understand, first to understand the connection between mis mysteries and miseries. The connection between mysteries and miseries. And number two, it is to understand the solution to mis mysteries. The solution to mysteries. The way of handling mysteries please take note of three key things by way of introduction first behind most miseries are mysteries behind most miseries in life are mysteries another way to say it is behind most sufferings are secrets Behind most miseries are mysteries. Number two, when the mystery is revealed, the misery can be dissolved. When the mystery is revealed, the misery can be dissolved. Thirdly, when the mystery is revealed, mastery can be accessed. Mastery. When we unravel the mystery, we can step into victory. I'll give two examples from scripture. There was a sudden famine in Israel. Three solid years, no food. Then David went to God. What is happening? Second Samuel chapter 21 verse 1, all the way to verse 6. Then there was a famine in the days of David three years, year after year. And David inquired of the Lord. And the Lord answered, it is for Saul. Why is there these three years of famine? It is for Saul. 
and for his bloody house. The meaning is, it is because of Saul. Because of his bloody house. Because he slew the Gibeonites. The Gibeonites were people who entered covenant with Israel. They were not to be killed. Even though they were in the land of Canaan. They were, to be, they, they were meant to be water drawers and wood hackers. But Saul killed them. And David asked, Lord, what shall be done? And the king called the Gibeonites and said unto them, Now, the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites. And the children of Israel had sworn unto them, and Saul sought to slay them in his zeal to the children of Israel and Judah. Wherefore David said unto the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you? Wherewith shall I make the atonement that you may bless the inheritance of the Lord? And the Gibeonites said unto him, We will not, we will have no silver nor gold of Saul nor of his house. Neither for us shall you kill any man in Israel. And he said, What? You shall say, That will I do for you. And they answered the king, the man that consumed us, that devised against us that we should be destroyed from remaining in any of the coast of Israel, let seven of his sons be delivered unto us, and we will hang them up unto the Lord in Gibeah of Saul, whom the Lord did choose. And the king said, I will give them. I can stop there. I can read all the way to verse 7. Why is there no food in this land for three years? Why are people suffering? Lord, what is going on? He said it is Saul. It's because of Saul. It's because of Saul. It's because of Saul. Whenever the mystery is revealed, the answer can be unveiled. When it is known the reason behind the misery, the answer to the misery can be unveiled. First of all, it was revealed why there was scarcity in the land. Then the answer came. When the mystery is revealed, Mastery can be accessed. That was the third thing, thing we noted. So, example was Second Samuel chapter twenty-one, verse one to six. Mystery is behind misery. Secret is behind suffering. When the mystery is known, the answer can be accessed. Number two example was the example of Rebecca in Genesis chapter 25 verse 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him and Rebecca his wife conceived. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, if I be thus, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. You can stop there. We shall read from verse 22 to verse 23 from the Living Bible Version. So you can understand what was going on. It wasn't just struggle. It was like a pregnancy that was of a different type. The Living Bible. And it seemed as though children were fighting each other inside her. I can't endure this. She was under pressure. I can't endure this. She exclaimed. So she asked the Lord about it. If this is how pregnancy is, will anybody be pregnant? What am, why am I passing through something like this? She was carrying a pregnancy that appeared miserable. Read it again, verse 22. 
can't endure this. Maybe you are in that situation now. Where you are saying I'm passing through so much. I, I can't even endure what I'm going through now. And in verse 20, she inquired. And in verse 23. And the Lord told her. The sons in your womb shall become two rival nations. One will be stronger than the other. And the older shall be a servant of the younger. Listen. Most mysteries thrive on secrecy. Most mis mis mysteries thrive on secrecy. And most of the time, the revelation of the mystery carries the unction for the dissolution of the mystery. Most of the time. Most of the time, as the mystery is revealed, the misery is dissolved, even without prayer in this case. Because once God told her what was going on, it looked like the fight stopped. There was no more complaint until the time of her birth, the delivery. Once it was known what was going on, the power of that misery died. But the first one was suffering because of a bad situation. In, the, in the, the, the first example I gave, the nation of Israel was suffering because of a bad thing. Uh, the, Rebecca in the second example was suffering because of a good thing. So it could be both ways. The misery could be, the mystery that is behind the misery could be positive or negative. To have twins is a blessing. But she was suffering because of an attempt to bring forth twins. Most times, people pass through things and they are wondering why is this so. It's because of what you are about to deliver. At times, it's because of your potential that the devil puts your life under pressure. But this is the point. Mysteries are behind miseries. And we have seen two cases where something was going on and there was a mystery behind it. I came across the story of a family where young ladies were dying in their 20s. 20s. Their twenties. And when prayer inquisition was made that it was a, a bad situation. It was revealed that in that family there was a big king that had many wives and he had died in those days like three, four, five, six generations ago. And as the transition was in those days when a king dies they said a wife or two should escort him to the land of the living. The land of, to the, to his, escort him for his journey. And in this case, they buried his youngest wife alive with him. She was in her 20s. And while she was being buried, she was cursing. I did nothing wrong. You people want to, you are killing me for nothing. No lady in this family shall exceed this age on earth. And that curse that was coming from the grave was deleting the, the ladies as they approached that age of early 20s. It's not meant to happen to you as a child of God. But my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. I came across such a story. I came across another story of a young lady trying to get married. And she went to her mother and asked her mother, why am I struggling? Men are coming, but nobody is going, agreeing to, I mean, it doesn't work out. And the mother told her, look at me, am I married? Look at my mother, is she married? Look at my grandmother, is she married? She said in, in their family, they don't get married. 
they had been married out according to her to their deity or whatever. The women are free to give birth to as many children as they wanted but not to settle down as a wife of a man. What a demon. When that mystery was revealed, the misery was arrested. Beloved, what do you do? Maybe you are in a miserable situation now. Or some things around you that you can't understand. It's possible there are mysteries in the background. Three things to do. Number one, be determined to know. Be determined. Hosea chapter 6 verse 3 said, Then shall we know if we follow on to know. To know the Lord. Follow on to know whatever. Then shall we know if we follow on to know. Be determined. Whatever is behind this matter, you, you, you must be unveiled. That was what, what we read in our text in Matthew chapter 10 verse 26 where it said, fear them not. Don't fear the situation you are in. Don't fear the circumstance around your life. For there is nothing covered, including COVID, that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. Nothing covered. Doesn't COVID sound like covered? <laughs> Nothing covered. Be determined to know. Number two. From the determination, you move to the asking. Ask God to reveal the mystery. Every mystery hanging around my life, my destiny, my future, our nation, whatever. Father, reveal the mystery. Jeremiah chapter 33 and in verse 3 said, Call unto me. And I will answer you. Jeremiah 3.3.3 3, 3, And show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Call to me. Call unto me. Call unto me. Call unto me. Call unto me. And I will answer you. And show you great and mighty things. Which you knew not. Jeremiah chapter 6 and in verse 16. It says, stand in the way. See, ask for the old parts. Matthew chapter 7 and in verse 7. Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. So you ask. You ask. Lord, everything that is a hidden mystery around my life, open my eyes to see. Especially during a fasting mood. You know, during fasting, light spring forth. Light spring forth. Light springs forth. Ask God to reveal. Finally, pray in the spirit to know. Pray in the spirit to know. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and in verse 2. He said, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue.
tongue. Speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understanded him. How be it in the spirit? He speaketh mysteries. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and in verse 9. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed on them unto us by his spirit for the spirit searcheth all things yet the deep things of God the spirit search every, searches everything at the place of prayer in the spirit we can know beloved the template and I want you to proceed and trust God for the revelation of the mysteries behind your miseries. Whatever is not of God and whatever is not working well, it shall be revealed. Before we pray, how many of us think that the coronavirus issue is a mystery? It's a mystery. Let me item, itemize for you many aspects of the mysteries of it. Because we'll pray something about that tonight. First of all, I see this, the suddenness of his arrival. Strange Ness of his arrival. Second, you see the swiftness of his spread. Before you can say, what is going on here? Europe is overwhelmed. North America is overwhelmed. Africa is overwhelmed. It's a mystery. And then thirdly, you talk about the disastrousness of his effect. Disastrous. The death tolls. One doctor in New York said at a point, it looks like the thing was, it was like a slaughterhouse situation. You turn left, right. Now as a medical student, you are trained to, you see dead bodies regularly, normally. From year two, anatomy lab. All the way through to pathology and autopsy rooms. Hey, but the kind of things the doctors saw in this season, especially in North America, I'm, I'm not sure they have ever seen it in their life and may they never see it forever. Like a slaughterhouse situation. The disastrousness of his effect. And then thirdly, you look at the extensiveness of his impact. This is a, a, a situation that was not just dealing with the health of individuals. It was dealing with the economies of nations. Dealing with the economies of families. Economies of organizations. It's mystery of the coronavirus. And then, fifthly, you look at its aggressiveness against the church. Aggressiveness. When I started hearing that, <laughs> they, they say churches will not hold in fact it's from other countries. I thought it was a joke. I mean, his first point of call was the church. Very first point. They will say churches should not hold before they say offices should close. Church first. Well, let's call it places of worship. 
And even as the lockdown has relaxed in most places, and they said the supermarkets can open now, markets can open now, um, offices of um, can open now, um, uh, uh, banks can open now, and those kind of whatever, what is called essential services, church is still not to open. Until one abnormal president said, the church is an essential service that nobody can say the abortion clinic should be opened and the alcohol store should be opened and the restaurant should be opened and church should not be opened. It took one man somewhere that many people think is not normal. To come with such a reasoning. Even though there are, there are quote and unquote religious people in various leadership positions around the world. But their religion did, has not reached the point where they think that the church is as an essential a service as any other service under heaven. And I think that when we were praying yesterday and we said we bind the agenda of the enemy and we release religious freedom and religious liberty across the world, we never knew what was going on there. Maybe the announcement had already been made, but we got to hear of it after we prayed. After we left here, we got to hear of it. It may have been out before or while we were praying. I, I don't know. But that was what happened from the American president. There is aggressiveness against the church. So something is mysterious that, about it that is more than ordinary. And then you look at the dreadfulness and unwholesomeness of his news. The dreadfulness and unwholesomeness of his news. The news about it is targeted to inspire fear. Instill terror. And the news about it is not, most times not completely complete. <laughs> I'll give you an example. Yesterday, we went on the visit to the second isolation center in Nigeria, the Guagualada University of Abuja Teaching Hospital. And we went to assist in any way possible, encourage our professional colleagues in the medical field, and also do our spiritual obligation to pay them a visit and with the background understanding of drug regimen and background understanding of treatment protocol that is going on now, we went also with essential drugs that are related to the COVID itself. And the time we went, the day before we went, this is the this was the statistic for our city of Abuja. 447 people since the COVID situation started almost three or more months ago. 447 infected people on record with 133 people discharged. 133 with seven deaths. Most times around the world Generally, you hear of how many died and you will hear of how many were infected. Rarely will you hear that anybody was discharged. It is made to appear like death sentence. That is what the COVID came with. Or the coronavirus, the new coronavirus. 447 and 7 deaths, the percentage death. So far, if we trust God that those active case on admission will come out normal, then the percentage is 1.5 percent. Now, 
in that particular treatment center, total number admitted, 81. Total number discharged, 64. You don't know that anybody is discharged. Currently on admission, 13. Total deaths, 3. 96% survived. COVID doesn't want you to hear that. <laughs> doesn't want anybody to hear that anybody survived. But that devil is a liar. The dreadfulness and unwholesomeness of his news. Meanwhile, it is important to know that malaria infection globally in 2018 stood at 228 million. Mortality, death by malaria in 2018 is 405,000. Nigeria in 2018, 95,000 deaths attributable to malaria. Has everything shut down because of malaria there? According to the Institute of Health Metrics and Evaluation, about 930,000 people died of malaria globally in 2204. If that is shadow, look at HIV. 37.9 million people are currently infected with HIV globally. About 1.7 million people worldwide were infected in 2018. I saw a statistics where about close to a million people, this one says 770,000, but close to a million people in 2018 died of HIV. Nine fifty-four thousand died of HIV AIDS alone in, two, in 2007. Since, eh? Almost a million. Between 2007 and 2006, close to 2 million people died of HIV each year. 75 million people have been infected so far of HIV and 32 million have died so far. That is for those that were recorded. There are many deaths we don't know. And everybody is not yet forced to have HIV vaccination. Because HIV can come from any means. Infected needle or syringe and several other modalities. But the COVID arrived with its mysteriousness and whatever may be behind it. So, we are praying. That fear must die. Now, I mentioned that four forty-seven people infected, one thirty-three discharged. To be discharged means you are well. Now, actually, from what we saw, most people walking well. The only reason why they are kept is that they are positive. Now, before you can be released, you are tested nothing less than twice. First test, negative. They still hold you. Second text, negative. Then you are discharged. They, out of the 81 people admitted and 64 were discharged, it meant that those 64 were tested twice and they became negative twice. Yet, coronavirus says it is not curable. Maybe there is a new definition of curability. So we shall pray. Whatever be the mystery behind, whatever is behind this thing shall be fully exposed. Anything that, whatever it is,
people talk of conspiracy theories. And if, if there is a conspiracy, let it be exposed. Whatever it is with this matter. Hallelujah. Nothing hidden. We are seeing some revelations coming out gradually. But we are trusting God for an explosivity of it. Hallelujah. As we pray on this, also know that whatever around your life is an issue, it shall be exposed and it shall be unveiled in Jesus' precious name. We are going to be praying. Be upstanding everywhere you are and we shall pray. Master Koba Galarada Gaya Lalabarayada.